So what are the most pro-inflammatory things that we're exposed to? Um, this is a, uh, a, a very, <laughs> very efficient list at creating a lot of uh, chronic inflammation. So drugs in general uh, have multiple side effects. Um, they're hard to break down. Uh, for the liver and the kidney and, and chelate out of the body. So no matter what we're consuming, whether it's uh, a drug or an apple or a carrot, uh, your body's going to try and break that down, metabolize it, utilize it, and then get rid of the waste. Some things are much easier than others. Um, and of course, toxic metals, we're all exposed to uh, toxins and chemicals. Um, these alien molecules uh, can create various problems and uh, uh, anywhere from allergies to, to cancer can be uh, caused from these things. <coughs> Allergens are uh, an obvious pro-inflammatory process. Um, some people lose their sensitivities to various foods or airborne allergens once their immune system, once their circulation and their uh, inflammatory load goes down, they no longer react to these, these uh, sensitivities. Uh, of course, air pollution, the more we are exposed to that, it puts more and more inflammatory load on the body. Uh, something I call toxic water. Um, uh, for example, tap water. A lot of people drink right out of the tap, which uh, contains a lot of different uh, chemicals and um, uh, everything from hormones to old drugs and uh, fluoride and <laughs> not, not something uh, one would normally uh, utilize efficiently to help cleanse the system. Um, tobacco is something as uh, everyone knows is a toxin, um, at least the way they make cigarettes these days. Um, and of course, abnormal gut flora. Um, the, the, uh, the gut flora is almost a organ in itself and it can be a very anti-inflammatory organ once those uh, uh, probiotic material uh, and organisms uh, take over as an efficient unit, um, they can provide uh, a lot of uh, immune protection and anti-inflammatory properties. One of the things I like to measure in my patients is how much uh, tissue acidity they carry. Um, and this is an overall reflection of how much inflammation they're carrying. So I will often measure saliva and urine to, uh, to see on an average uh, how much acidity they're carrying and how much they're discharging. Um, overeating in general uh, can create uh, more inflammatory reactions. Um, constipation can also be a problem. The more we retain um, old material that we've consumed, uh, it can ferment and uh, create a lot of toxic material that gets reabsorbed in back into the bloodstream, causing arthritis and all kinds of inflammatory changes. Uh, Overprocessed foods, very hard to metabolize. Uh, stress in general raises uh, catabolic hormones, which uh, create more in inflammatory changes. And as we uh, said before, the less exercise, the less uh, circulatory uh, movement that we create, uh, the more likely these inflammatory products are going to deposit somewhere. And here's some interesting uh, tidbits. There are various animals on the planet that uh, are being studied to see why they live such a long time. For example, turtles. Uh, some are living over 250 years, and they've, of course, lived on the planet for many millions of years. Um, some of their organs have been shown to, to just not break down over time um, compared to, to human organs. 
And uh, interestingly, these uh, the liver, lungs, and kidneys of uh, some of these turtles uh, have been found to be indistinguishable between uh, teenage turtles and 100-year-old turtles. Um, this is a, a really good sign of longevity because if we can keep our liver and lung and kidney in good shape, obviously we're going to live a long time because these are major organs of elimination that, uh, that need to be de detoxified uh, on an ongoing basis. Uh, researchers are studying the genes of these turtles to see if we can glean any information that might benefit uh, the human species. There's also a uh, rodent uh, that lives 28 years, which is lengthy, uh, called the naked mole rat. And uh, it's interesting, they have a very, very slow metabolism. They can reduce their metabolic rate up to 25% whenever they want to. Um, they, their blood has a very strong affinity for oxygen. Um, so it, it does actually maintain their circulation more efficiently. Um, they have no measurable amount of histamine, so they don't have uh, common uh, allergic reactions that, that humans do. And uh, this is fascinating. They, they also have a gene that protects against cellular overcrowding. And uh, this is a fascinating uh, research um, that, of course, could provide incredible promise down the road for, uh, for prevention of cancer. And I just wanted to mention one jellyfish has been found to uh, be considered biologically immortal. Um, and uh, it's quite a statement. Um, this particular turtle, the Turatopsis uh, nutricula, uh, reverts to a sexually immature stage after reproducing. So it seems to just keep, uh, keep dying and creating a, a, another fish. So when we look at the overall population of the, of the planet, uh, we find that uh, many European countries have uh, a high percentage of people living over 65. Um, uh, the U.S. is only 12.8 percent, but compared to Monaco, which is 22 percent, um, quite, a, quite a big difference. Some uh, other interesting studies, in um, a 2007 study, they found in Italian 100-year-old uh, people, uh, these uh, folks had high circulating levels of vitamin A and vitamin E. So that could provide a clue as to uh, nutrients that might help prevent aging. And in Denmark, uh, the Danes were found to have high uh, red blood cell levels of glutathione and uh, superoxide dismutase activity. So uh, as far as the record goes, the longest living person lived uh, 122 years and 164 days. A French woman by the name of Jeanne Calmont and she was born in 1875. And uh, as far as the official record, she is the oldest person to have ever lived. Um, interestingly, she took up fencing when she was 85. She's still riding a bicycle at age 100. And, and that, that's a good <laughs> promotion for uh, staying active and exercising. Uh, I thought it was fascinating that that she smoked from age 21 up to age 117, but only uh, smoked two cigarettes per day. So everything in moderation. She also attributed her longevity to consuming lots of olive oil, uh, even applying it to her skin daily. And of course, that would be a lot of omega-3 oils. Uh, she would drink some port wine daily and also ate a lot of chocolate. 
So how do we slow this, uh, this gradual aging process that is caused by inflammation? Uh, probably one of the most important ways is maintaining an acid alkaline balance within the body. Our bodies are always trying to maintain a, a 7.4 level of pH in the bloodstream. Um, it's, the, it's the underlying tissues that really suffer because as we try to maintain that, that narrow margin of uh, pH within the bloodstream, um, there's a lot of give and take going on behind the scenes in the tissues. So it's important to provide uh, an alkaline reserve for your system. Otherwise, uh, you can lose bone. Um, there's very good research showing the direct correlation between acidity in the body and uh, loss of bone in general related to osteoporosis and osteopenia. Um, other key ways, uh, obviously, to maintain good cellular membranes and avoiding uh, using up your cells, basically. Um, providing uh, the right minerals and nutrients that help uh, maintain this cellular uh, integrity. And, of course, maintaining circulation. It's such a key. Any kind of movement, exercise, um, Every, every time we're able to uh, maintain circulation through whatever organ we're treating, uh, oftentimes it can repair itself if given the chance. Um, one of the things I look at with my patients is making sure all their drainage routes are open. And by drainage, I mean organs of elimination, including kidney, liver, colon, lungs, skin, um, other uh, things that uh, are, have been shown uh, to help slow the inflammatory process, of course, is hormonal balance. And also just uh, plain old rest and uh, stress reduction, having fun once in a while.